Hi everybody! Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Well, I am standing next to what is pretty much the last of the tomatoes for the summer. These are paste tomatoes or sauced tomatoes and they have a lot less moisture in them which lend them to making sauces, barbecue sauce, pasta sauce, uh, ketchup, those kinds of things. And because I'm pretty much caught up on all the tomato sauce that I need and the diced tomatoes that I need for the next year, this is a perfect opportunity for me to share with you my homemade ketchup recipe. It has been several years that I have been working to find a ketchup recipe that I really love. Now let me tell you something, I love ketchup. And not only do I love ketchup, but I love a particular brand of ketchup, and I can sometimes be considered kind of a ketchup snob. I love Heinz ketchup, and so I've been looking for a canning recipe for homemade ketchup that tastes as similarly to Heinz ketchup as I can possibly find. And last year was the year that I think I found the best homemade ketchup recipe that could be. So today I'm so excited to get started on this recipe and I'm gonna share it with you. As you may know, there is a particular canning book that I absolutely love. It's my favorite canning book, but the ketchup recipe that's in there, I didn't like. So this is not from that particular book that I love so much. It's actually kind of a combination of several recipes that I've tried and I've looked up online. I, this uses all safe canning practices, so you don't have to worry about that, but in the end, I think it is a fantastic product. We need to get started because this is going to need to cook down for quite a while. So the first thing that we need to do is get these tomatoes ready to go into our pot that's going to cook down, but before that we need to weigh them because we're going to be basing this recipe off how many pounds of tomatoes we have here. So I need to get started coring them and weighing them to put them in our pot. Okay, let me tell you what I have going on here and what my plan is. I've got all of these tomatoes. I've washed them, I've been coring them, and then I have um, a scale, like a kitchen scale here that goes up to 10 pounds. I'm filling my bowl up until it's five pounds, filled with five pounds, and then basically putting it into my roaster pot. I am hoping for 25 pounds of tomatoes. That's the goal for this recipe, is to get 25 pounds of tomatoes in here. Now, I have taught lots of different ways to work with tomatoes, as far as getting them from the whole tomato to the sauce. I have taught to put them through a food mill to get the seeds and the skins out. I've taught to just take the skins off and deal with the seeds. But today I'm doing something different. I'm going to be keeping the seeds and the skin on. I'll core them and cut them up, put them in the roaster pot, cook everything down with the seeds and the skins and all the other ingredients. And then in the end, I'm gonna blend them up in a blender. So I have never taught that before. So if you have been watching my videos from previously uh, this summer when I did a lot of canning sauce making, this is gonna be different and it's intentional. There are lots of ways to deal with tomatoes. I don't feel like any one of them is the best or the only way. Definitely whatever works for you. And I've kind of evolved in that way with tomatoes over the years. Um, I absolutely love just coring them, skinning them, and dealing with the seeds, but this is a new adventure. Let's see how it goes. Maybe next year this is the only way I do it. I also want to talk with you just really quickly about the varieties, the two varieties of paste tomatoes that we've been growing because I get a lot of questions about that. There are two varieties, like I said, and they're large paste tomatoes. This one here is called Salvaterra Select. This one here is called Opulca. They vary in size. They vary a little bit in shape, but to not too much. I love these, they're my favorite. I will always grow these from now on. They're big, they're productive, and so a little bit goes a long way. Now, if you're not growing your own tomatoes, you can find paste tomatoes in the grocery store. Roma tomatoes are paste tomatoes, so you can do this recipe with store-bought tomatoes. No problem, guys. So like I said, I washed all of these. 
I'm coring them and I'm taking off any like yucky spots on the skin. You don't have to worry about your tomatoes being perfect to use them. Just cut the yucky spots off um, and use them like that. As long as they're not like rotten and kind of gross, just cut the bad spots off and use them. Let me turn on my scale. We're going for five pounds in the bowl. I already have 15 pounds in the roasting pot. Okay, here is another five pounds of tomatoes. So this will be 20 pounds. We need five more pounds after that. But to help with the breaking down process in the roaster, I'm just gonna cut these tomatoes into just smaller pieces. So I'm either gonna cut them in half or I'm gonna cut them in quarters, depending how big they are. And they're just gonna go right in the pot. This is easy peasy stuff, guys. Well, I had the perfect amount of tomatoes in the house. I actually had 22 pounds of the paste tomatoes and then I made up the difference with just some of the slicer tomatoes that we had in the house. So 25 pounds of tomatoes. There are other things that need to go in here, but this is overflowing with tomatoes at the moment. So we're gonna turn on the heat uh, on my roaster. This is a Nesco 18 quart roaster. I absolutely love it. And for these kinds of jobs, or if you're making meals for a large amount of people, this is fantastic. It's not only like a slow cooker, I use it mostly like a slow cooker, uh, but you can turn the temperature all the way up to like 400, 450. Uh, there recipes online. You can just make all kinds of things in these roasters, so I highly recommend it. But like I said, we have other things to go in here, but there's no room. So we need to start cooking these down. I'm going to put the lid on here. I'm going to turn this up to 250 degrees. That's the standard crock pot um, temperature for low. So I'm going to turn this on 250 and let this start cooking down. After we have all of the ingredients in here and after everything is hot and steamy and kind of boiling then i'm going to take off this lid so that the liquid can start evaporating but right now it's not the time for that right now we need to get all of this hot i do want to say that i do have this nesco roaster in our amazon shop if you want to take a look at it the nesco brand is really great it's a good quality product and this um, thing you saw that I was able to lift this in and out some of the cheaper versions of these roasters don't have the lift out pan which really makes it hard for cleaning so if you're thinking about investing one of these go ahead and get this Nesco brand it is really good well it's the next day I had accomplished my mission yesterday to get all the tomatoes off the counter and into the roaster so that they wouldn't go bad. And then I thought, you know what, those tomatoes are just fine in there on the low heat with the lid on. They're just gonna cook and cook. So it's the next day now and the tomatoes are doing great inside of there. They haven't evaporated too much. The liquid hasn't. So now is the time for us to put in the rest of our ingredients. We'll get that cooking nice and hot and then we can remove the lid so that we can boil out a lot of that extra liquid, turn it into ketchup, can it up, and then we got ketchup for the rest of the year. Let me show you how it's doing in here. You can see that the tomatoes are all soft, which is fantastic. There is a lot of liquid in here, guys, just like I had told you. Uh, so as soon as we get the rest of the ingredients in here, get that up to a boil so that all of the ingredients can uh, really soften and cook down. Then we will remove this, turn up the heat a little bit and boil out a lot of this liquid so we can get it into jars. All right, the first ingredient that we're gonna be adding is onion. We need three cups of onions. I'm gonna just use my, um, I'm gonna use my Vidalia Chop Wizard that I absolutely love. Chop them up with the larger sized squares. This is something you guys saw me use a ton this summer when I was doing the Every Bit Counts Challenge. So we're just gonna chop these up, put them through the Vidalia Wizard and put them into our mixture with our tomatoes. So three 
cups of onions. Now, because this recipe isn't like part of a cookbook or anything, and I just pretty much have it written down on a piece of paper, I'll make sure to include the quantities of the ingredients in the description section below the video. So check there for um, all of the ingredients and the measurements for those. Okay, I put in our three cups of diced onions, and now I'm going to add two cups of sugar. This is organic uh, evaporated cane juice. You could probably also use um, the same amount of honey if you'd like to. But I don't use corn syrup at all. Like, I don't like corn syrup. Um, and so I made sure to find a recipe and kind of tweak a recipe, develop one that didn't use any corn syrup. So this just uses sugar. Two cups for all of this ketchup I don't think is a lot, but if you don't like as much sugar, uh, maybe reduce that some more. But I think in the end, this isn't gonna taste super sweet, but it is really gonna make it taste like good, yummy ketchup. Okay, we have more ingredients. We're gonna add one quarter cup of canning or pickling salt. We're also gonna add three cups total of vinegar. So I'm gonna use half white vinegar, one and a half cups of white vinegar, and one and a half cups of apple cider vinegar. Now come the spices. We're gonna put two and a third teaspoon of granulated garlic. You can see I buy garlic. I'm pretty serious about my herbs and stuff. So I buy these in bulk from Azure Standard. A half a teaspoon of mustard powder. And one quarter teaspoon of celery seed. That's it, you guys. It doesn't seem like a lot, seems super simple. How can it be that simple and taste so good? Well, it is simple and it does taste that good. We're just gonna stir this in here. I'm gonna turn the heat up. All this time it's been on 250, which is about the low temperature on your slow cooker, on your crock pot. I'm gonna turn this up to 300 for right now and I'm gonna put the lid back on so that the heat is trapped inside of there and it cooks down the onions. Uh, I'm gonna wait maybe 30 minutes or so and take the top off and increase the temperature again so that the evaporation can increase with the increased temperature and we can boil this down faster so that we can get to canning. Well, it has been quite a while that these tomatoes and all the ketchup ingredients have been boiling down and they're to the point where I think it will be thick enough to blend up and can as ketchup. I wanna show you how much of that liquid has evaporated. It's always a game for me to see how thick I can get sauces, how much liquid I can have evaporate before it's time for me to blend them up. So let me show you just how much liquid has evaporated out of these tomatoes is nice and thick. I think it will make a really nice thick ketchup. Hi! Yes, it's a new day. After what you just saw, I blended up my first batch of the ketchup and realized that it was too runny. Then I realized that my microphone had died and everything that I had recorded had no audio. So we're gonna pick up the best that we can today. Last night, I couldn't charge my microphone and I thought, I'm just gonna give up for the day and finish this tomorrow morning. So that's where we're at. Hang with me, guys. We will finish this ketchup today. So you can see here that most of the ketchup mixture is still in my roaster. I kept it cool overnight, but last night, like I said, I blended up the first batch of what came out of here in our blender. We have a new blender. We've been hearing a lot from some of our viewers that there are blenders out there that will blend up the skins and the seeds, just basically 
pulverize them and blend it right into the sauce to make a nice smooth sauce. And one of the types of blenders that will do that is a Vitamix. Vitamixes are pretty expensive. So we found online that you can buy some that are refurbished and they're a lot cheaper. So that's what we did. We bought a refurbished, very basic model of the Vitamix blender. And I'm gonna be using that today. Last night when I blended up the first batch, it was too runny. When I poured it into a stock pot so that I could heat it up, I realized that it was still too watery. And when I put ketchup on a burger or dip some fries into it, I don't want watery ketchup. So I realized that it's going to need some more boiling down from the sauce pot. So that's where we're picking up today. We're going to blend up the rest of the tomato mixture. I mean, it has gotten a little bit thicker, but not a whole lot. We're going to put it in sauce pots. I think I might need more than one sauce pot and just boil that down a little bit more before we can it. I want nice, thick, plump ketchup. Okay, well, we're gonna cook this down on one of the lowest heats here and come back when it's time to can it up. Okay, guys, it's finally time to can this ketchup. I feel like I've been working on this ketchup forever, but it's going to be fantastic. So let's get started canning. As with all tomato sauce kinds of products. You are going to fill the jar up to a half inch from the top of the jar. By the way, all along I've been tasting this ketchup and it's amazing. Simple yet tasty and amazing. Okay, half inch from the top. It's nice and thick. We're gonna use a chopstick and twirl it down in there to make sure there aren't any air bubbles in there. We're gonna take a damp cloth and wipe the rim to make sure there's no food debris on there. Put on a clean lid and a ring. Tighten it to finger tight and then we're gonna put it in the hot water canner. My ketchup is almost boiling hot, probably boiling hot. The jars are hot from the oven. I don't know how many pints this will make. Last year, this recipe made 11 pints. And so if it makes that amount this year, I will be very pleased. Okay, the last one goes in the pot. We get to turn that on. Now this ketchup, when it gets up to a boil, we're gonna process it for 15 minutes. Well, actually, I need to process it for 20 minutes because of our altitude. I know I've been raving about how good this ketchup is, but I just wanna tell you that my kids like it better than store-bought ketchup. And I think it compares to my favorite Heinz ketchup. I hope that you try it. We just need to get this processed, pull them out of the canner, and it will be done. Well, that batch gave me 11 pints plus a little bit 
extra to go in the refrigerator to get us started. You guys, you just don't know how excited I am that I've been able to kind of perfect this ketchup recipe that tastes so much like store-bought, but it's homemade. And I'm so excited to be able to share it with you. I know I've been talking about ketchup recipes for years on YouTube, but haven't been able to bring to you one that I'm really proud of, but this is it. So if you're looking for a ketchup recipe, please give this a try. You're gonna love it. I'd also love it if you would share this video because this is an amazing ketchup recipe. People will be proud to make this for their family. You guys, if you're enjoying videos like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. And like I said, really the best way that you can help us here on the Homestead is to just share our videos. Do that for us. We would love it and appreciate it. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the Homestead. Take care and God bless.